Well, good evening, folks, and how is everyone doing on this beautiful Sabbath day? I don't know about you and where you're at, but I woke up this morning and looked on my phone for the temperature, and it said that it felt like minus 18 this morning. Seems a little early for that, but hey, it was a brisk morning, good day to be alive, and a great day to worship the Lord. Amen? Let's bow our heads before we get into our topic for the evening. Father in heaven, I ask that you would bless us. I ask that you would be with us this evening. Lord, we thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for the snow. It kind of just covers everything. And it reminds me of how Jesus will cover my life and make me clean and pure uh, as long as I am keeping my eyes firmly fixed on him. So Lord, may that be our aim and our goal in life is to know Jesus, to be like Jesus so that his robe of righteousness can cover us and keep us cleansed and pure. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. I want to share a passage of scripture today found in John 14, verses 8 and 9. John chapter 14, verses 8 and 9. And here's what we read. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, I have been so long with you, and yet you have not known me. Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. So Philip is saying, Jesus, show us God. We want to know God. And Jesus is simply saying, you've been with me all this time, Philip. You really should know God because if you know me, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So there you have it, folks. The reason I keep telling us to look to Jesus, the author, the perfecter, the finisher of our faith, is when we see Jesus, we see the Father. When we see the Father, we see the giver of all life. It's a wonderful, wonderful passage of Scripture. I want to look here at Manuscript 133, and it's called The Importance of God's Law. And I want to see how it relates to the passage that we've just read. And I hope we can glean something that will fill us with hope and comfort and joy and give us an admonition for how we need to order our lives uh, as it relates to our eternal life. Here we read, we cannot, by searching, find out God, but he has revealed himself in the character of Christ, who is the brightest of the Father's glory and the express image of his person. If we desire a knowledge of God, we must be Christ-like. Did you hear what that says? If we desire to know God, we must be Christ-like. <clears throat> he who does not seek each day to be more like Christ cannot know the character of God. Living a pure life through faith in Christ as a personal Savior brings the believer into a clearer, higher conception of God. A knowing Christ as a personal Savior. That takes personal effort. That takes you and I opening our Bibles. Yes, day and night. I know I keep going on about this and I will never stop. Uh, but when we spend time with Jesus day and night, when we have a personal relationship with him, we know him, we know the Father, then we will also know eternal life. Let me read on a little bit more. No man whose character is not noble and Christ-like can set forth God in a correct light. He may preach Christ, but he does not show his hearers that Christ is an abiding guest in his heart. In other words, you may have the head knowledge but you've got to be putting it into practice in your daily life, living like Jesus, doing the things that Jesus would do, being heavenly minded and still of earthly value. Those who are partakers of Christ's love through a reception of the truth will give evidence of this by making earnest self-sacrificing efforts to give the message of God's love to those who are in error. Thus, they become laborers together with Christ. Love for God and love for one another unites the soul to Christ by the golden links of love. The soul is bound up with him in sanctified and an elevated union. I don't know about you, but to me, this sounds really wonderful. I am going to continue to seek to know Jesus so well that I'm bound up in this sacred union. True sanctification unites believers to Christ and to one another in the bonds of tender sympathy. This union causes to flow continually into the heart rich currents of Christ-like love, which flows forth in love for one another. 
having trouble loving a neighbor, having trouble loving someone who is unlovable and difficult to love, spend time with Jesus. It will take care of itself. The more we become like him, the more the problems this world throws at us will diminish. And the more like heaven, we will appear. The qualities which it's, it is essential for all to possess are those which mark the completeness of Christ's character, his love, his patience, his unselfishness, his goodness. These are the qualities with which it is essential for all of us to possess. It is the greatest and most fatal deception to suppose that a man can have faith unto eternal life without possessing Christ-like love for his brethren. I'm going to read that statement one more time. It is the greatest and most fatal deception to suppose that a man can have faith unto eternal life without possessing Christ-like love for his brethren. That's why the Bible says you can understand all prophecy. You can have all knowledge. You can do miracles. You can do all these things. But if you do not have love, it profits you nothing. He who loves God and his neighbor is filled with light and love. God is in him and all around him. Christians love those around them as precious souls for whom Christ died. There is no such thing as a loveless Christian, for God is love. You see, brothers and sisters, we say we want to be like Jesus, then we need to be loving like Jesus. Let's ask the Lord this evening to give us more of his love, to fill us with his spirit so that we can be more loving, to drive us to the word more often so we can understand more of Christ's character and be more like him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we ask today that you would fill us with a love for mankind and a love for you. Uh, Lord, you're the only one who can change hearts so we ask today that you would create in each one of us a clean heart, renew a right spirit within us, and fill us with a love for a world in need. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, blessings and have a wonderful rest of your evening.